Alright guys, what's up? Um, basically, for those of you who are new to the channel, um, this is my new EJ257 full Cosworth built closed deck, the whole shebang uh, motor, which is going to be going in my 99 Forester. Um, I've done a video basically running down all the specs and stuff on this, so if you want to check that out, uh, click on the card that pops up here or one of these sides, anyway. Um, so yeah, there's that. That is replacing my blown EJ207, which is a 2000 model JDM version 6 one. So this is one with a really good head. Um, basically I've spun a bearing in this. Um, we pulled this out of the car last weekend. I'm basically in the process of swapping things over, making things look all nice, etc. So I figured while I'm here, and I'm about to put the sump on, I figured I may as well do a comparison while I've got the stuff between like an EJ20 versus EJ25 sum, um, oil pickup comparison, so stock uh, versus Tigworks or Killer B, they're probably the most uh, popular ones, and also windage trays, so stock versus Killer B, and also Tigworks do one, but I've got a Killer B one anyway. So, yeah, let's do it. So I suppose we'll start from the absolute middle of the motor and work our way out. So um, first thing is the windage tray. So this is the factory one. It is a, probably, I don't know, one mil thick uh, pressed, what appears to be stainless steel. It doesn't, it's like for a factory component, it looks relatively decent quality. So this, uh, let me remember. Yeah, so that sits in there like that, basically. So the idea of these is basically to stop oil sloshing into the crank. So that is the factory one. That normally sits there. And then I suppose while we're here, may as well talk about the pickup as well. This is the factory pickup. So again, it's not too bad. Like it appears to be a decent gauge stainless steel, but the downfall with these, it hasn't happened to me, but I've heard a lot about it, is the, um, obviously the mounting bracket, there being one of whereas the other aftermarket ones, as you'll see in a sec, have two. So there's been a lot of cases of these snapping and you know you can all guess what happens when that snaps off and this doesn't pick up any oil. So that, you know, basic stuff. Um, it's kind of sleeved with an O-ring. Um, that O-ring sits on there. Pretty much. And then that will basically mount down there. Something like that. So you know that's good, but it can snap. So I'll move over to the new motor and I'll show you what the new ones look like. All right, so moving on, I have got a Killer B windage tray. So this I'm pretty sure suits basically all EJ series motors. Um, oh, look at that. Oh, awesome little sticker. So you can see the difference in this one. This one's a definitely a lot bigger gauge. This is probably 1.6 mil, I'd say. Uh, a lot different, a different vein setup, obviously, as you can see. So this sits in like that. So it also sits a lot lower, or I guess a lot higher in the motor because this is upside down, obviously. So that's the main difference that I can see so far. And it also doesn't come up over here, which is the coolant crossover, I believe. Yep. So that's that. And then we move on to the oil pickup. So this I got with the motor, so I'm gonna run it. And I've done my research, they're a really good product as well. Uh, this is Tigworks. Um, they're basically the same as Killer B, same quality, same setup. As you can see, it's about a two mil, 2.4 mil uh, reinforcement bracket, uh, nicely TIG welded on there. So, you know, everything's TIG welded, it's really thick gauge steel, so nothing's going to snap. All really good penetration on these welds too. And also, just around the strainer also, is a lot thicker and a lot more beefier. So it can cop any knocks, not that it should be getting any, but in the case that you did, it's not going to want to snap and break off and then leave you fucked with a, a blow motor because you can't get oil into it. So basically the same deal, this thing. And the, actually, before I put it in, the only difference really is the O-ring. So the other one kind of sleeved, as you probably remember. This one has a little O-ring boss in it, um, which is either either, as long as it works, it doesn't matter. So that, you know, same deal. Just means you've got two pickup points now, and that's that. 
So, yeah. All right, so we got the oil pickups and the windage trays out of the way. Hopefully you can see the differences with them and why you would invest in the extra dollars to get a stronger aftermarket one. Um, so now we'll move on to the oil pans or sumps. Um, so starting with this, this is an EJ20 sump. This is the one off my old motor, the 207. So um, firstly, these are directly interchangeable between all the EJ series motors. Um, yeah, so if you look at these compared to each other, they're the same shape, obviously. Um, the dipstick tube, which is here, is the exact same. And they've also got the O-ring kind of boss for the turbo oil drain. So while I'm touching on that, um, I don't know if a lot of you guys know this, but it's actually a pretty good setup. It drops down into the bottom of the oil pan. So you won't be able to see it from there, but basically the drain drops it right down to about there on the oil pan. So that's, that's actually a really good setup. I didn't know that happened until I actually looked at one of these off the car. But that's really good for firstly, when you've got kind of frothed up oil coming back from the turbo, it allows it to go down and mix back into more solid oil instead of putting kind of frothed oil on top of the, the oil level and getting picked up by the um, oil pickup. And also, if you have any, not that you really will unless you've got serious problems, but if you have any pressure built up in your sump, um, having the oil drain submerged constantly in oil um, means that you basically, any pressure can't blow through that oil and then back up your, dip, uh, your oil drain tube. So that's another really cool thing. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably already knew that, but um, yeah, just a helpful little information I thought I'd share. So, yeah, all that's the same. Um, but then on the outside, you can see the kind of obvious difference, EJ20, EJ25. So EJ20 is a lot bulkier. It's also a lot heavier. Um, not that it really matters. But the EJ25 has got this cutout um, for later model headers, obviously. And a lot of the aftermarket headers um, kind of rely on this to route their, their design through. Anyway, so that's that. Um, I'll show you guys now if you're interested how to install your sump. Um, so yeah, let's do it. All right, so as you saw before, obviously the first thing to go in is your windage tray. Um, if you're doing this on a fresh motor out of the car, it's obviously a lot easier. Um, also, before you do that, obviously check there is nothing obvious in there because once this goes on and your sump goes on, you're not going to know and you don't want to run the risk of stuffing anything up. So that goes in there like so. So the next thing is the oil pickup, uh, which goes like that. But for now, I'll put these two front bolts in. So if you can, um, reuse the factory bolts because they're apparently the best ones you can use. So the next thing, um, Another thing you got to do, make sure you lock tight all of these because especially high power ones of these, these things rattle and there's all sorts of vibrations. So the last thing you want is any of these rattling loose. So lock tight is a must. So just snug them down, um, basically finger tight, just so you can leave enough room to maneuver that if needs be to line it up with the holes. So next thing, um, obviously check your O-ring mating surface on your pickup, make sure that there is an O-ring there actually. So it's just a matter of now placing that on. And I'm gonna put the two oil pickup screws in just loose. So then again, lock tight, remember that. So now they're in pretty tight enough. Um, just move through to the ones that are for the support bracket. That is why you keep them loose because I have to kind of juggle the windage tray and the bracket and also pivot on them to get that screw started so I didn't cross thread it. So once they're all started, obviously you can go through and Get them finger tight. 
So, because these are only, as you can see, really small bolts, uh, M6 looks like, and you're going into alloy, these don't need to be super tight. They are Loctited, so they should be locked in. Um, so, you know, don't go crazy. I always like, I don't actually have the, um, the torque specs for this, but as you do a lot of this stuff, you kind of become familiar with how tight things should be. So on this uh, quarter inch ratchet, I like to kind of hold it close. So I'll always start with the middle ones. Torque them and work your way out. Then the oil pickup. And again, this doesn't need to be super tight because it's got an O-ring, so you don't want to squash the shit out of the O-ring, but it still needs to be snug enough. So that feels pretty good. Just notice how I'm gripping the socket basically as close to the pivot point as possible. If, you, if you're gripping it out here, you're basically bound to um, shear something off. So that is the wine is tray and the pickup on. That thing is super, as you can hear, it's super tight, super solid. Super duper. All right, so when it comes to the sump, um, everyone's kind of different with how they made it to the motor. Some people like to use a gasket, no RTV. Some people like to use both. Some people like to use just RTV. I've tried pretty much everything uh, over the past with numerous different cars and to be honest my favorite is just straight RTV and that's how I'm pretty sure they do them from the factory um, so yeah get yourself some decent RTV this is the stuff that I use um, I like to use it in the corking corking gun it just makes life easier um, and yeah so that's that so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure your surfaces are clean. So I always use some um, wax and grease remover. You can use metho or even acetone, I guess, if you want. Uh, just be careful with acetone, though. Or some thinners. Um, but yeah, wax and grease works really well. So just get a nice, clean microfiber cloth. Wipe everything down. And I should mention, I guess, um, if you're doing this on a motor that has already had a sump on it and has residual RTV or gasket or whatever, make sure that you scrape that off and also be careful scraping that off because you don't want to kind of take chunks out of this mating surface, especially if you're using only a gasket. That's where RTV comes in really well. Um, if you've got any kind of uneven gaps or whatever, the RTV will kind of take it up and fill it. So now that that's clean, I'm gonna do the same thing on the face of the sump. Also, definitely make sure you've got this um, O-ring here that seals onto your turbo drain return, as we spoke about earlier. So this is probably the hardest part about it, and it's not even that hard if you've got um, any experience with caulking. You've just gotta lay a nice bead down, and not too much. So now that you've laid a pretty neat and small bead, hopefully like that, um, I like to just go along and pretty much smear it all out evenly. All right, so now that you've got your bead pretty nicely smeared around, oh, I'm marking up my beautiful new sump. Um, just go around the inside and kind of just pretty much chamfer it back like that. Just so that when it does ooze, it's gonna to wanna to kinda of push to the outside instead of pushing inside and you know, potentially breaking off and clogging up your oil pickup or even getting through your oil pickup and into the motor. All right, so that is it, ready to go on, basically. So then it is a matter of literally dropping it down
like so. Perfect, that is literally bang on, first go. So then get a few bolts in, probably one on each corner roughly to locate it. And now you're good to go. Get them all in finger tight, and then we can torque them up. All right, so they're all basically finger tight now. So, um, in the manual, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there is a torquing sequence for these. And also because they're such a small bolt into aluminium, they do not need to be super tight. Um, as you probably saw in my previous video, when we pulled that motor out of the car, the old one, um, that sump was RTV'd on and that thing did not want to come off. So you know what, even if you lost your bolts, that RTV would hold the sump on. But you shouldn't actually rely on that, but that's what happens in the real world. So um, what I like to do anyway, I can't remember the torque spec, but like before, you've kind of got, if you like most of you guys, if you're at this stage, you've probably got a feel for um, what things should be torqued at. I'll try and find it and put it on the screen for those of you who don't feel comfortable enough doing this um, just by feel. All right, so with one rotation done, um, I'm just gonna go back around now and do the final nip. So just basically get them all the same kind of pressure and that's it. And then just as a final check, just go around in you know, anti-clockwise or clockwise fashion, just checking that they're all pretty much the same and that you didn't miss any. All right, and as simple as that, that is done. So that is one more thing off the list till I can finally get this thing back in the motor. Well, that's it. That is seriously as easy as it is. Um, you know, obviously it'd be a lot harder with the car, with the motor in the car, I guess. But I'm happy with that. That's solid. Everything's solid. It went together nicely. So props to both TIG Works and Killer B for basically fitment. Bang on there. Um, so yeah, if you guys aren't already following, make sure you follow this build because this is a pretty stout motor and you know, it'd be cool to see um, what it puts out, I'm going to be running a GDX3576 turbo on this. So I should have full boost by about 35, 3700 RPM. And I'm hoping run in tune basically daily for now to make 300 kilowatts out the wheels on 98. Hopefully. Because I might have to run a little bit of uh, water meth like I do on my ute. But yeah, I think it can be done. So yeah. Subscribe, stay tuned, and I'll see you guys in the next one.